Hi, this is Tom from zerodefinals.com. I wanted to make a video today on the function of the placenta and trying to understand exactly how it works to support the fetus while it's growing. So, firstly, we've got to take a basic look at the placenta. We all know that the baby comes along with an umbilical cord, and down that cord you have two umbilical arteries, and they carry deoxygenated blood away from the baby. And then you have one umbilical vein, and that carries all the good oxygenated blood that's full of nutrients away from the placenta and into the baby. Inside the placenta, you have a bit of a complex network of arteries and veins, but they're quite simple once you get your head around them. First of all, you have the maternal vein and artery inside the placenta, and these veins and arteries feed into something called the intervillar space. And what this is, is basically pools of maternal blood, form sort of like a lake in which lots of maternal blood is collected, just sitting there waiting to interact with the fetal blood. Now you have the umbilical arteries and the umbilical veins that penetrate and form a sort of tree-like structure within the intervillar space, so inside those pools of blood. And the maternal blood and fetal blood don't actually mix, but they come in very close contact across a thin membrane, and that's known as the placental membrane. So across this placental membrane, lots of things can transfer or diffuse from the maternal blood into the fetal blood and vice versa. And it's this process of diffusion that forms much of the function of the placenta. Let's look at the first function of the placenta, and that's the respiratory function. So because the baby can't actually breathe, it's in a big bath of amniotic fluid, it needs to rely on the placenta to basically act like a pair of lungs. So what does it do? Well, firstly, oxygen needs to transfer from the maternal blood into the fetal blood. And the way it does this is fetal haemoglobin has a higher affinity for oxygen than maternal haemoglobin. What this means is, if you put a molecule of maternal or adult haemoglobin next to a molecule of fetal haemoglobin, oxygen will actively transfer from the maternal haemoglobin to the fetal haemoglobin. Just think of the fetal haemoglobin as being more sticky for the oxygen, more attractive for the oxygen. The second respiratory function is that the carbon dioxide that's present in the fetal blood all of this waste carbon dioxide that's generated by the fetus simply diffuses across the placental membrane from the fetal blood into this pool of maternal blood. That way the baby can get rid of a lot of the carbon dioxide that it's created. The next function is an excretion function, and you can think of this as the placenta acting a bit like a kidney that you'd find in an adult. So what it does is it balances out a lot of the chemicals and molecules that need to be balanced in the blood. Things like bicarbonate, hydrogen ions, lactic acid, urea and creatinine, they can all diffuse across the placental membrane and balance out the baby's blood in the same way that a kidney would do in an adult. The next function of the placenta would be the nutrition function. So the baby can't actually eat any food while it's in the womb. So it relies on the mum to eat and create carbohydrates and micronutrients that circulate around the mum's blood, and then these diffuse across the placental membrane into the fetal blood and provide the fetus with oxygen and vitamins and micronutrients that it needs to grow. This is one reason it's so important that the mum doesn't become nutrient deficient in, say, iron or folate or B12, during her pregnancy. So if we find that she's deficient, we'd supplement her with these. The fourth function of the placenta is the immunity function. Now, antibodies that the mother has created, her immunity to infections that she's picked up in the past, those antibodies can actually cross the placental membrane and into the fetus. And this is really good news because it protects the baby during the pregnancy from any viruses or bugs that the mum might pick up and also protects the baby shortly after birth. So a really good example of this would be of recurrent genital herpes. Where the mum has had genital herpes several times in the past, she'll have IgG antibodies to that virus. So when she gives birth naturally, even if she has active genital herpes, they won't be passed to the baby 
because all of those antibodies will have crossed the placenta and will be circulating inside the fetus, ready to protect it whenever it comes into contact with that virus in the newborn period. And the final function of the placenta that we need to mention is the endocrine function. This is where the placental tissue itself actually creates hormones that help to maintain the pregnancy. The first hormone that we should mention is human chorionic gonadotrophin or HCG. This hormone is secreted at increasing levels throughout the pregnancy by the cells of the placenta. And what it does is it helps to maintain the corpus luteum until the placenta takes over producing other hormones that maintain the pregnancy. The next hormone the placenta produces is estrogen. And this is important to make everything soft and supple, all of the tissues of the uterus and pelvis, so that they can get stretched during the pregnancy and during birth and delivery. And the final hormone that the placenta produces is progesterone. And it produces progesterone from about five weeks onwards. And the whole point of progesterone is to maintain the pregnancy and keep the uterus nice and relaxed and to keep the endometrium nice and healthy and well perfused so that it's got a great blood supply for the placenta and for the fetus. And that pretty much sums up the respiratory, excretion, nutrition, immunity and endocrine functions of the placenta. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget there's plenty of other resources on the Zero to Finals website, including loads and loads of notes on various different topics that you might cover in medical school with specially made illustrations. There's also a whole test section where you can find loads of questions to test your knowledge and see where you're up to in preparation for your exams. There's also a blog where I share a lot of my ideas about a career in medicine and tips on how to have success as a doctor. And if you want to help me out on YouTube, you can always leave me a thumbs up, give me a comment or even subscribe to the channel so that you can find out when the next videos are coming out. So I'll see you again soon.